Okay, what I'd like to do in this video is discuss the rules for categorical syllogisms. That is, how do we identify uh, fallacies associated with categorical syllogism and how do we use these rules to determine if a syllogism is valid or not. Okay, clearly we don't do it that way. There we go. Okay, what I'm going to do is something a little bit different from the book. I'm going to go backwards because working from rule 5 up to rule 1 is actually easier than starting with rule 1 and working to rule 5 because 5, 4, and 3 are easier to identify than 2 and 1. So let's start at rule number 5. Basically rule number 5 says that if both the premises are universal the conclusion cannot be particular. Okay, so A and E are universals I and O are particulars, so if the premises are both an A or an E, and the conclusion is an I or an O, it's a violation of rule number five. Now, on all of these, you're going to have to name the fallacy rather than saying what's violated. And in this case, the fallacy committed is the existential fallacy. All right. Now, the existential fallacy is only a fallacy from the Boolean perspective. So if this is the only rule broken, then the syllogism is going to be conditionally valid. All right, so this is a good way of checking things. You've got three ways of determining if a syllogism is valid or not. All right, you could use mooted figure, you could use Venn diagrams, and you could use the rules. If a syllogism is conditionally valid, it should be violating rule number five. All right, and obviously you should have a circle X, or actually not, you should have a decision of whether to use a circle X or not in your uh, Venn diagram. Rule number four. Rule number four says that a negative premise requires a negative conclusion, and a negative conclusion requires a negative premise. So, if there is a negative conclusion, that is an E or an O statement, with two affirmative premises, a or I statements, the fallacy will be drawing a negative conclusion from affirmative premises. Okay, so look at that conclusion first. If it's negative, one of the other two premises has to be negative as well. Otherwise, it's the fallacy of drawing a negative conclusion from affirmative premises. If there is at least one negative premise and the conclusion is affirmative, the fallacy will be drawing an affirmative conclusion from a negative premise. So again, if the conclusion is affirmative, there cannot be a negative premise, or it's a violation of rule number four and the fallacy of drawing an affirmative conclusion from a negative premise. Rule number three, you cannot have two negative premises regardless. Okay, so regardless of whether the conclusion is affirmative or negative, there cannot be two negative premises. All right, remember E and O statements are negative, so if you have a syllogism that's EE -E or EO or OE or OO, that's going to be a violation of rule number three, and this fallacy is called the fallacy of exclusive premises. Okay, rules number two and one are a little bit more tricky because now, excuse me, you can see I'm not editing this much, now, um, we need to go a little bit deeper because the fallacies we've looked at so far can the fallacies we've looked at so far can be identified by looking at the types of statements that is whether they're a e i or o the next fallacies require knowing what is distributed remember way back in the beginning when i said you know we need to learn universal particular um, distributed terms all those things that i said you need to know why later well now you know why you need to know things things because uh we have to determine distribution to determine whether the last two fallacies are violated. What I like to do is generally write out the syllogism and circle the distributed terms. So remember, for an A statement, for an A statement, uh, the distributed term is the subject, A, uh, in all A or B. In an E statement, both terms are distributed, the subject and the predicate. In an I statement, neither is distributed. And in an O statement, um, only the predicate is distributed. All right, it's important to remember that um, certain terms are distributed in certain kinds of statements because that's going to help us determine uh, if a syllogism is valid or not. 
Rule number two, if a term is distributed in the conclusion, it must be distributed in the premise. So again, circle the distributed terms. Write out your syllogism, circle the distributed terms. So look at your conclusion. If the major term, that is the predicate of the conclusion, is distributed in the conclusion, but not in the premise, the fallacy is going to be illicit major. If the minor term is distributed in the conclusion, but not in the minor premise, the fallacy is going to be illicit minor. All right. Now notice this does not work the other way around. If a term is distributed in the premise, it does not have to be distributed in the conclusion. All this is saying is that if a term is distributed in the conclusion, it must be distributed in the premise. And finally, rule number one, the middle term must be distributed at least once. And if this rule is broken, the fallacy is undistributed middle. Okay, remember, if a syllogism is valid, no fallacy is committed. Again, we have three different ways of checking validity. We could look at the booted figure, we could use the Venn diagram, and we could use these rules. Uh, hopefully, you'll try all three and make sure that your answer is consistent. If you find that a syllogism is invalid, you should find that there is no fallacy committed. That is, none of these rules are broken. All right, well, thank you for watching this, and uh, I will move on to the next video, which will be uh, how to get rid of those pesky nods in your syllogisms. Bye for now.